someone that I know recently got a fridge and they were kind enough to let us have the cardboard. You know that I use cardboard from time to time in the garden. So I'm going to be using this to create the biggest no-till garden bed that I've ever done. I'll sort of figure out what's the actual dimensions I'm going to be going with this no-till bed. But uh, yeah, <laughs> it's going to be an exciting little experiment, exciting little project that we have here. So let's get going. Hello everyone, thank you all so much for joining in. This is Dylan from the Trini Gardener channel and I can't tell you how happy I am that I was able to procure this um, this massive piece of cardboard. Um, of course cardboard is more or less like free, but when you just get a big set without having to do any work, my neighbors they just got a, a fridge, a big enough fridge, so they said, you know, take the cardboard if you want to use it. And I didn't ask for it, but they knew that I used it in the garden, so they offered and I was just very, very happy to take it. Um, didn't cost me anything at all to even go and get it and um, yeah I'm going to be using this to start a no-till garden bed on this side of my property now you all will remember my older no-till garden bed as the first one I ever did and to be honest I was really happy with that one it started off kind of slow but then I got some cabbages and I got um, you see some bird peppers here um, I grew also cauliflower here I grew um, well it's seasoning all the time you can grow sweet potatoes, you can grow whatever you want in the no-till garden bed. But what's amazing about the no-till garden bed, sorry, it's just so hot. The sun is really uh, not giving me a chance at all. Um, what's amazing about a no-till garden bed or this method of gardening, even if it's not necessarily no-till, the idea of just putting down something like, well, there's agricultural top that you could actually put down. Um, that, of course, is going to cost you some money. The cheaper and, of course, the, the free version of that is what I'm going to do today. That's the idea of just putting down cardboard directly on where you had weeds it's you know you have your native soil as is the soil in your backyard whatever the quality is it doesn't matter you put down your cardboard on top of that i'm going to be putting down a nutrient rich soil here i'll talk a bit about that soil that i'm going to be using and you're putting it directly down on the cardboard and the idea is that you can start planting your plants directly on top of this cardboard here and not have to worry about it the normal worry would be so what happens to the cardboard after some time? I'm just going to keep it there forever. And the idea is, no, it's going to disintegrate over time with weathering, with um, organisms coming up and feeding on it, with the just rain melting it down. Over time, it's just going to completely disappear. And you're just going to be left with a... Sorry, I have a little... Oh, garden, this is... A, oh, you want to say hi? Oh, damn it. Um, want to say hi? Yeah, so um, she's saying hi. She was running down a little... um always lizards but then i think she got like a old can coke from a really long time ago so you just turned my video do you know that do you know that yeah those things she cares oh, very much oh come 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 give me give me some space right um sorry what was i um yeah right so we are going to be putting down directly the soil on top of it and the idea is that over time the top the cardboard is just going to disintegrate it's going to just completely just disappear and you just be left here with a, a bed that you can be either no-till or you can till it if you want and the plant over time they're going to develop their strong roots that they're going to start to grow on top of here with the soil that i put here and then eventually they're going to go down into the hard dirt that we have only there now i could have just planted on top of that dirt but the main problem for me is firstly the soil is really hard but secondly is the fact that we have so much of weeds especially in the rainy season it can be very very hard to maintain a garden especially when you're busy and you can't be in the garden every single day for two three hours weeding um it's just such a, a easy thing to just have the cardboard keep the weeds down because we sometimes forget there's this thing called photosynthesis which you probably heard about in form two form three agricultural science or general sciences whatever you have and um it's the idea that if plants don't have light they can't grow and the same thing goes to weeds if you deprive the weeds of light they really can't grow so none of the weeds here even though here was full with weeds just a few seconds ago before i put the um, cardboard down they're not going to be able to grow anymore and you're just going to have a weed free garden now the key to maintaining that is the edges because you can't have weeds where the cardboard is fair enough but on the sides you're going to have weeds and you have to sort of maintain the sides which i'm going to have to just run a hole on the sides once you know it once a while just keep it fairly neat and that's going to keep away weed seeds and also keep away the weeds from just kind of 
creeping onto the bed itself but you know without any further ado let's get straight into planting we're going to talk a bit about my soil and then we'll talk a bit more about um, what you can do in your own garden to have a garden like this started up let's get to it okay so this is my soil here it's 12 bags of soil now where did i get it from it was from one of those vans that just passed around so i don't think it's the absolute best quality of soil but i did that i got it from the vans because i know that i can amend this soil and i can make it into what i want it to be um, so i i'm going to be using this as sort of the bulk of soil because i don't need to cover the entire thing in any case there's like a dip here so like i don't expect it to um to be level right now and to be honest to level it will take some time as well i didn't need to do all of that so just to be simple i got this soil from the van it was six bags for a hundred dollars um and you know also $200 in soil and investment on my part but I know this is going to last me for years so I don't mind at all um, and um, to this I have my own compost my homemade compost now I have my animal manure so I'll be putting in some cow manure that's been curing there you all know how long I cure my cow manure for so it's probably been there for you know seven eight months at this point and in addition to that I also have my compost which is my green waste vegetables you know kitchen scraps kind of compost that I make myself Going to be adding that to this as well um besides that i'm going to be adding my worm castings going to be adding some you know organic fertilizer that you all see me using all the time and the idea is that whatever this is i'm going to improve it it looks okay to be honest my main um, thing when i'm buying this kind of you know for soil from any kind of van see if you all can see um, is that i really want to see humus right so what humus is is you'll see like those kind of a kind of stick looking thing inside of it now i think it has cocoa core as well you could see some remnants of it so that's good for me that's good that's the main thing that i want to see that it has organic matter that's what we mean when we talk about organic matter things that are organic that are going to help with not just creating a home for organisms to more or less live in like microorganisms your beneficial bacteria uh, beneficial fungi your mycorrhizal fungi that kind of thing but also that is going to help with keeping this nice and um, airy to allow for enough drainage to allow to keep the soil itself um, aerobic as opposed to anaerobic and um, each of these bags um, so you can see the size of the bag here right so i kind of measured it out just to get an idea of what it would be so that is almost one of these standard size construction buckets um, full all right so it's up until about here so um, with standard size um, in a standard size bucket of soil right so just you simply take this you find the point the lowest point that you want to plant on for me it's going to be here so it's going to be like a bit of a, a heap that i'm going to be going here and just pour it out that's it cool so oh so it was um so this is 12 bucks here and they gave me an extra bag so that's what i put into the uh, bucket there just for my own purposes to measure it um, but also good to show you all as well. So it's more or less 13 bucks. So I'm just going to empty out all of these over here. At this point, it's been about five or six bags that I've put down here, um, including the bucket, right? So now I'm going to stay a heap like this. I'm just going to spread it out. As I said, um, I don't have the resources right now to do the entire thing. And to be honest, I think that's probably better for me because um, I don't have a level spot here so it will just take too much to do the entire thing so I'm just happy to do a part and the benefit of that is that it gives me a bit of buffer space between the edge of where I'm going to be planting and the weeds so when the weeds start kind of coming in it'll be easier for me to just kind of pull them out um, if they do start to you know weeds can grow in like just a, a toenail full of, of soil right so there we go and on top of this now i'm just going to be walking like for me the first time i saw somebody do this it just um it looked crazy to me because how could something grow in just about two inches of soil right but what you have to remember is that the two inches of soil firstly roots don't just go down they can grow side by side to side and then in addition to that once the roots get strong enough they're going to pierce straight through this um, cardboard and they're going to go into the soil underneath here which they wouldn't have been able to had i planted directly into them but once they sort of gain their strength from this soil on top here then they can go down to the soil underneath and the thing about the soil underneath this 
is that yes it's hard yes it's sort of you know your topsoil clay kind of soil but the benefit of that kind of soil is that they're full of trace and minerals they're just mineral rich soil right that's almost any kind of dirt that you have on earth is going to be that sort of mineral rich kind of soil um so that's amazing that's going to help your plants itself so your plants wouldn't have been able to access that had it not had the chance to grow like this in a weed free environment that is also allowing it to grow all right so i'm just going to put the rest of the bags and i have to amend it with some of the cow manure the compost worm castings um organic fertilizer etc okay see in a second so we've got 12 bags on top here now i'm just going to be putting a bucket i was thinking two buckets and i'll show you it of uh, this is call manual you can see a difference in colors right to the top here um i'm not sure if i'll put the next bucket because i want to put the compost as well and um yeah that's going to be it for our no-till well for me it's no-till but you don't have to do it no-till in your garden as well so okay let me get the next bucket of what i end up putting right so here we have a bucket of uh, compost just my own green waste compost so i'm just going to be incorporating that into it i uh, i'll bring a handful for you to see sort of what my compost looks like just every single handful i'm sorry there's a worm here if you don't want to see the worm well, please look away but yeah the compost itself is just full of worms because compost is something that worms just they love the worms themselves are amazing their poop just contains just such amazing fertilizer that is amazing for your plants but more than just amazing for your plants it's amazing for the soil and being amazing for the soil is what makes it amazing for the plants because it just contains everything that you need that um, it's really good high in nitrogen um, it has trace minerals as well it's just such a good thing to see worms in your compost and that's just an indicator that you're doing something right if you're composting and you have worms in your compost like these kind of red wiggler kind of worms yeah gross but also very very beneficial in your garden beyond just the worms um the compost itself um is just such a whoa okay this is gonna freak out some of you it's freaking me out but i don't know if you all can see there is a massive worm here i don't know if you all can catch that i don't want to bring it too close i know it's gonna gross you out look at this size of this my goodness i think it's an old um, kind of indian name that people use for those kind of worms that get really massive right um but as i was saying the compost itself has uh just a rich um it's a rich source of micro um mycorrhizal fungi that basically goes um it's in your soil and what they do is that they connect to the roots of your plants and then from that connection they create what's called a symbiotic relationship a symbiotic relationship is basically a relationship where a big organism helps out a small organism for something that the small organism does with the big organism so just imagine that i had a little um family member cousin or something that was here and they were like, bringing water for me and in addition to that i was you know giving them snacks or something like that right that's a symbiotic relationship there i'm living off of them they're living up living off of me right so what the mycorrhizal fungi will do with your roots um, of your plants is that the plant will produce sugars that the fungi need to live and in exchange for those sugars the fungi will actually create a network of like extended roots using themselves as the roots so they basically triple and quadruple the size of your roots itself because you have like this much of your actual plant root and then you have like this much that's just fungi that's feeding off of your plant but in exchange they can just go and look for all kinds of nutrients whatever the plant needs and they will use their long chain of themselves because they're in the millions or billions you know microscopic size and they just bring it back for your plants that's why fungi itself is such an amazing thing to have in your garden and compost homemade green waste compost that has no kind of chemicals no kind of big um industry um just oh any kind of whatever inside of it it's just completely natural that's the best source of that kind of fungi in your soil itself and also of course beneficial bacteria that also has its own part to play in that entire process of getting nutrients to your plant itself so it's just such an amazing thing to have especially when you're doing a garden like this where you want the soil that you're putting here is just designed for growing plants it's not maybe as mineral rich as the actual soil from the earth but it helps the plants to get to that point where it can now pierce into the hard earth and get that mineral rich um, that get into the mineral rich um, soil itself the topsoil 
um, as you would normally call that, right? So let me empty the rest of this compost. Right, I'm going to sort of level this out and I think we'll be done. So you all at home, you don't have to start with something so big. What I'll ask you all to do, if you're interested in starting something like this, is to look at my very first video on a no-till garden. I'll put up a link for it um, right here and um, you'll be able to see how I started out with the no-till garden. I also provide an explanation on the no-till garden, the no-till idea, the idea of a no-till garden. But um, this is just a bit of a, a bigger way of doing it. And um, I'm just really happy that, firstly, my neighbor was kind enough to give me the cardboard to be able to do it. And then, of course, I did invest a bit into it um, with the soil itself. And then I mended with my own. But there we go. So I'm just pressing it down. This is fine to press down like this. Um, actually if you don't then there's just too much of air pockets so when the plants are growing and they meet air pockets they will actually turn um, in addition to that is that the plants they don't get proper anchorage like they don't develop their own strength if the soil is too airy so you do need some level of compaction not to the extent that it's going anaerobic because it's so compacted but with soil that is so rich in um, organic matter you don't have to worry too much about that right because the organic matter maintains a structure right a soil structure um, that is a combination of many things going on but the organic material itself is really the key to that real structure i'm really sorry i'm seeing worms that whatnot that i'm pressing on they're not dying but uh, they might be a bit angry with me at this point here but yeah this is my no-till garden bed and uh, what i mean by no-till is that when i'm ready to you know amend this or if I'm ready to take out plants and plant new plants, I'm not going to be like turning it up. I'll literally just take the plants out, leave the roots inside, let it decompose inside there, and I will allow that to, you know, just decompose inside the soil and enrich the soil, create housing, create food for more microorganisms, um, the beneficial bacteria, the beneficial fungi, as well um, inside of this soil itself here. Now, I'm going to be putting down some seeds into this and see what happens with those seeds. For now i don't have seedlings or seedlings that i want to put here right now but when i do to get my first proper harvest from this i'll bring you all along so that you can see what the fruits of our labor um, basically produce here and that is pretty much it i can start digging holes into this and planting out whatever i want to plant directly inside of the seeds seedlings don't have any seedlings right now as i said but um this is this is really just it and you don't have to worry about um, weeds because as i said earlier the weeds themselves can't can't grow here because there is no space for them to get light to be able to grow so where you all saw there was weeds here the weeds are going to be on the sides and that's what i said i need to kind of clip the sides make sure it's nice and neat but in terms of my actual garden bed as you saw in my other garden bed over there there isn't going to be much at all in terms of weeds over here because of the the cardboard and that's what's amazing about it remember if you want to see more about this then follow me especially on tiktok but you can follow me as well on instagram and on facebook um, at the Trinity Gardener, same name, same email, Trini, the Trini Gardener at gmail.com if any of you want to reach out to me for any of your concerns. Um, if you have any questions about this entire process, then feel free to, you know, leave a comment below. Let me know, um, you know, what you want to know about. And I'm happy to help out. Remember that you can also tag us on any of the platforms that I just mentioned, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, because it's such, for me, just such a motivation to see you all like using the tips that you learn in these videos and also other tips and also doing things that you think that I could learn from you because some of you all have been gardening like so many more years than me. I'm just so happy when you all share the knowledge, when you all share little tricks. You all show me how well your harvest are doing. People are growing a lot of sorrel these days. I'm really happy to see um, how your sorrel is doing. And um, remember, if you know somebody who would be interested in probably this kind of garden bed, but also just interested in gardening and growing their own homegrown organic food um, in a way that is, of course, affordable. In a way that it's organic and self-sustainable then feel free to share this video and also the channel with them remember as always this has been the love from the trinity gardener channel reminding you to get up and get green take care